good to have everybody in. Uh, the process was um, thorough. Uh, Ran and I spent quite a bit of time together interviewing, uh, making sure we brought guys in to speak to them. Uh, wanted to see guys in person, wanted everybody uh, to, to feel the presence in the room. And so it was a little bit uh, drawn out. Um, it's still going. Obviously, there's still hires to make. Um, but part of that process was intentional. We were trying to make sure uh, that we got the best people we could get for our staff and for the fit uh, on the personality side as well. So that part of it's been really fun. It's been it's good to get to know other people around the league, guys that, that I haven't had some familiarity with. Uh, obviously, leaned heavily uh, on Rand's relationships. Obviously, if you, if you all know Rand, he's, a, he's about as big a people person as there is. And um, he's got a ton of contacts around the league, uh, people that, that he knew that I didn't, that uh, we had conversations about. Rand was involved in all the interviews as well. Uh, really good sounding board for me, really good um, advocate of people that he knew, uh, which was really helpful to, to be able to sit and talk with him about uh, the interview processes. So Again, really excited about it. It's been a thorough process. Uh, I'm proud of, of what we've put together so far. Uh, I'm excited about the, the people we're bringing into the building. Uh, and it's something that, that I, you know, it's nice to have some life. I've been by myself for about three weeks. But me, Rand, and, and Tom Jones uh, have really been living together here in the building. So good to get some more energy and life in it as well. So uh, with that, I'd like to bring up uh, our new defensive coordinator, uh, Denar Wilson. Come on up, man. First of all, just you know, thankful for being here. Uh, thankful for the opportunity. Um, it's great to be a Titan. Um, great to be around this organization, being around Rand, being around Brian. Um, I can't wait to get started. You know, we we on the early phases right now, but um, this is a great opportunity, and I'm excited to be here. Questions? You know, uh, it's so harder and harder to kind of declare a base defense. Mm -hmm. Imagine you'll call base once in a while. What what do you kind of envision building off of from there as a start? Well, right now we're just going through the process. You know, uh, we just got here two days ago, really. The staff's coming together. So we're evaluating the players, evaluating the talent that's here. You know, about football, it's, it's not about scheme. It's, it's about the players, right? So we have to figure out what they do well, and then we'll put the scheme around them, all right, to allow their talents to flourish. Um, I could tell you this about the scheme. All right. And I learned this a long time ago. General George Patton said this. Nobody ever defended anything successful. You're going to attack and attack some more. We're going to be attacking defense. We're going to be violent in our approach. All right. We're going to be smart. We're going to be intelligent. We're never going to compromise for competing. And that's the style of brand of football that we're going to play around here. So you mentioned the attacking part of it, so I would imagine blitzing will be heavy. You, know, you look at your background, whether it's Bowles, uh, Greg Williams, like how much did that influence what you plan to do here? Well, just like anything, you, you, you learn from the people that you've been around. And obviously, I've been around a lot of great coordinators. So a lot of things that they do is entrenched in, in my being. Um, a lot of the philosophies they've had, you know, I believe in. So we're going to blitz, but... We're going to blitz, and when we blitz, it's going to be smart. It's going to be educated. It's going to be there at the right time. It's just not going to be reckless. We're going to play coverage. We're going to play man-to-man. -man. Uh, we're going to be multiple in everything we do, all right, in terms of our fronts, any of those things. So we'll be versatile, all right. We'll be, you know, we'll present problems to offenses, all right, on how we approach it, and, you know, we'll go from there. What have you said have been your biggest influences, uh, you know, to get you to this point? Uh, it's been a lot of guys. Like, you know, you mentioned Greg Williams. He gave me my first opportunity, him and Jeff Fisher, um, with the Rams. Um, you know, I hold them, I hold them at a high, high regard. Um, I still communicate with both of them. Todd Bowles was outstanding to be around. Uh, just being around uh, Coach Harbaugh this past year, hell of a head coach. I think he's a Hall of Fame type, type coach. And uh, those guys have been big influences on me. Also, we have some guys on the staff that we have here that has also, you know, been uh, influencing them. Frank Bush is a hell of a coach that we have as a linebacker coach. Tracy Rocker, I was with him in Philadelphia. He's a hell of a coach. Steve Jackson, I worked together with the Jets. He also, Steve Jackson, was my coach as an undrafted free agent, all right, in, in, in Washington. Uh, Chris Harris being around here, he brings so much energy. Uh, respect Ben Bloom and what he did at Cleveland and the way he had those guys play. Uh, and then it was a lot of uh, people that was already on staff, like like uh, Clint McMillan and, and Lori, who's who's here. Those people, you know, they're great people to be around. Um, they're going to be a uh, great influence on me, helping me through this process. You've been with the uh, Ravens most recently. Mm -hmm. 
their philosophy always seemed to have a knack for finding the football, creating turnovers. What's your philosophy regarding trying to get the football? It's not going to change. You know, we, we understand as the ball travels further and faster in the air than it does the ground. So we have to play outstanding pass defense. We got to keep the ball in front of us. But within doing that, we have to attack the ball with violence. All right, the way you get takeaways in this game is population and technique, all right, and, and, and the manner in which you play. So the same philosophies they have in terms of the Ravens defense is going to be the same philosophy I carry. It's been the same philosophy of all the guys that you mentioned before that I work with. As you've gone through the beginning stages of evaluating the unit you're inheriting, just kind of what stood out about the players? Well, the guys that are here, they play hard and play physical. That's the number one thing. All right, they're tough guys. All right, they play with discipline. All right, they're physical. They're violent at the point of attack. And when you see that and the effort that they have, and you mix you mix the the coaching and and the new nuances that we'll bring, you know, we'll allow them to flourish a, a bit more. Callie, what were you looking for in this position, and why was why was Denard a good fit? Uh, everything you guys see so far. Um, Guys that had great knowledge of, of scheme and what defenses have to be nowadays in the NFL. Uh, there has to be a, uh, a willingness to be multiple, to play different coverages, to play multiple fronts, uh, to be able to mix the coverage scheme um, with the talent that you have, to be able to blitz when it's required to blitz, um, be able to play max coverage when you have to play max coverage. There's just an element of, of playing defense now in the NFL with, with the way that the passing game is and the way that these offenses are that um, if, if you lock yourself into one thing, uh, you tend to, to get found out pretty quickly. And so uh, just one of the things I always respected about the places Denard's been and the defenses he's been a part of uh, is that ability to, to be flexible and adaptable to what uh, the scheme on offense is presenting you. Meanwhile, still keeping a core fundamental approach to what is important on the defense and as, as uh, Denard has talked about it. But that's to me was the most important part schematically. The other part of it was the person. Um, you know, as you guys get to know Denard, as I've got to know Denard, is, is great energy, uh, really positive, good to be around. He's a guy that I, that I like sitting next to. And, and I've, I hired a lot of the people on the staff with that in mind is that they're guys that I want to go to work with every day. And, and, and I hope that they, as a staff, want to work together themselves. And I think that uh, your team feels that as well. So when your staff is connected and you want to be around them, uh, hopefully the, the locker room feels that as they come into the building with us. But uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're guys that I like being around and, and present a lot of positive traits, both uh, in the schematic portion uh, and the relationship portion, which to me are, are equally as important uh, when you're building a staff. You interviewed, I think, four or five places. Talking to Denard. Denard, yeah. yeah. Why, why was this and, and Brian the right fit for you? Well, it's the same thing. First of all, you know, I've, I've always admired the Titans organization. Um, followed followed this organization when they were in Houston. Um, had a lot of people that I've worked with that come from the organization. And when I got here, I was already excited about that, right? And then when I met Brian and I met his, you know, I met the way he, the way he is, the way he presents himself, the way he wants this, this team to be connected, right? The core values in terms of what he believes in as a, as a person, in terms of um, having good people around him, um, having friendships, and also grinding and, and working together. You know, you know, I admired that about him. I had a relationship with Rand already. You know, when we were young coming up, Rand Carthon and I, he was, a, he was a, a pro scout and I was a young coach. And we had numerous conversations just, you know, during those days of, hey, when we get to this point, um, this is how we would want to do it. Um, and, and we've always been in contact and always admired each other on the way we w way each other uh, work. And so it was a natural fit. And um, I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm, I'm learning about the organization, being here, and um, I'm excited to go to work. You've had a view for, for your career from the back end. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a defensive back coach, how much have you learned from, from that perspective about what needs to happen up front and how do you now kind of to plug into to the whole thing? Right. When you work from the back to the front, it's like a puzzle at the end of the day. It, all the pieces fit a certain way. So, you, you know, from a grand scheme standpoint, you can understand, you can look at the game from a big picture because you're looking from the outside in and from the back to the trenches. Um, you know, like I say, you know, I've been around great D-line coaches throughout the course of my uh, career, uh, great linebacker coach. Like I mentioned again, Frank Bush is a hell of a linebacker coach. And as a young coach, I learned a lot from, from those type guys to learn how to 
put it together. And um, over the years, I just got better at understanding how the uh, puzzle fits. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What makes a good defensive back in your position? Uh, first of all, you know, the first thing I'm gonna look at is 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 this guy talented? And he's, I mean, in terms of giving effort, and is is he willing to compete? If he's willing to compete and he gives effort, he has outstanding ball skills, can run, physical at the point of attack, violent at the point of attack. And when I say that, it's when the ball's in the air. You look at his attributes in terms of his foot speed, his quickness, his change of direction, right? A lot of things about DB play isn't just about their athletic ability. It's about position and leverage in their eyes. And if do they are they willing to look at the right things on a consistent basis? So just, just looking at those pieces and putting it together, for me, if I see a talented player, um, you know, I feel I can get the best out of them. And, um, you know, the more talented players we have, the more talented players we welcome. When you look at how deep, or rather, offenses are now, right? So many three receiver, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Nickel is almost base. Mm-hmm. What's your approach to how you look at DBs? Like, do you want them to be able to inside and outside, or do you plan to have guys specialize? Well, it goes back. It goes back to this: the more you can do, right? When you draft players, you know, you you don't want to uh, peg a player in one one position. The more you can do to help the team become versatile. Like you can have a corner that, you know, he, he brings a different aspect and he can line up at nickel and he's a good blitzer. He can line up in the slot, right? This is a matchup game as well. You know, there's so many great receivers in this game and the game is spread wide open. You want to have uh, people that's versatile, all right, to play numerous positions, to line up, to be able to adjust and adapt to what you're getting from the offense. And then on top of that, like this organization, they've struggled to develop the DB position. You look at guys you work with, you know, Jamal Adams, Hamilton, Bradbury. And what has been the key for you to be able to get the max out of uh, these talented players? Well, I live by these three principles as a coach. As a coach, you must be able to teach, motivate, and inspire. And any player that I've ever been around, the first thing I'm going to do, I I pride myself on being a a hell of a teacher. I'm going to motivate them to be better than what they think they should be or reach the potential they're supposed to. And I'm going to inspire them to go get it. And the coaches that we have on the staff, they have the same mantra. They believe in the same thing. So when we get a player, whether we in free agency or in the draft, those are our guys. And we're going to do everything we can in our power to teach, motivate, and inspire them to maximize their potential and go out there and have success. That might be part of the answer which you're getting ready to give me. But from day one when you meet your guys, what are the things you're going to preach that you want to see non-negotiables, you know, day in and day out? Well, we're going to talk about effort and the way we play, right? We're going to talk about having um, obnoxious communication. We're going to talk about brotherhood, playing as one, right? A team that fails to connect is a team that fails to win, all right? So the connection and the way we play, the way we communicate, the way we jail, that's going to allow the defense to come to life. Because when they believe in one another and they trust in one another to execute their assignment and play at a high level, that's when you get outstanding, violent defenses. When it comes to Jeffrey Simmons, he's one of the biggest leaders on this team, obviously. How excited are you to have a guy like that, and what are the qualities that you see in him on the field and obviously in that locker room? Well, obviously I had a communi- uh, talk to him the other day. Man, he has a great personality, uh, outstanding young man. But when you watch him play, he's a big guy. He's versatile. He can play the three technique. He can play outside. He's explosive. He has great hands. He can affect the play. He can affect the game by himself. And you know, to have players like that and put them in positions to have success, it's a wonderful thing coming in here when you have a guy that, that plays at that level. Much like Brian, this would be your first opportunity to be a play call mm-hmm. at this level. What's your approach in that regard, and uh, and how do you feel like it'll go? Well, you know, it's still early in the process, but, you know, we have OTAs, we have training camp. As we go through that cycle, you know, you get better and better. You learn by doing, right? So you get better on your job, iron sharpens iron. So we'll have call it periods and all that stuff. So, you know, you'll get better on the job, but also it goes back to what I just said earlier, the people that trained me to get here. And then I I can't mention enough, the defensive staff that we put together, they're going to all be a part of it. When we get into game planning, they're going to have their own sections. They're going to be the head coach of, 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 of their sections, whether it's third down, two minute, first and second down, drop back, the run game. So I'm going to lean on those guys. And then when we get into game plan, the, uh, into the game, the game plan is already done. 
right? So now it's about calling it how you saw it in terms of how the teams attack, their personnel, their tendency is on situational football, okay? And then as we start to play, we have to adjust to the schemes that they have because they're going to have new wrinkles. And with the guys we have and the wealth of knowledge that we have in that uh, defensive room, we'll be able to adjust quickly, all right, play by play, quarter by quarter, all right, half by half. So we'll, we'll be fine in that direction. You, know, you said you and Bran talked about how you would want to do things one day in positions like these. What are some of those shared traits in how you both want to operate? Well, both of us take pride in what we do, right? We, we, we spend a lot of time on, on the small details, all right, not missing any steps. Um, being able to connect with, with people, with players, with uh, people in the building, um, bringing energy all right, being humble in the same time, you know, just respecting the process. All right, Brand and I had a long obedience in the same direction. We started off, you know, in, in, in smaller jobs, and we've been able to build our careers step by step without missing steps. Um, so when we're in this position, you're prepared for it. Brian, given your role, obviously, as the game manager, head coach, and calling plays on mm -hmm. offense, were you looking to find essentially kind of the head coach of the defense, and did you find that in Denard? Yeah, I would. Uh, you know, that's a interesting way to to put it. I know it's how people talk about it these days, but um, I sought to sought out to find the the best defensive coach I could find. Period. Um, head coach of the defense, however you want to label it. I just wanted the most dynamic, talented young football coach I could find on the defensive side, and I think I found it. Um, Denard's going to have autonomy to run the defense the way he sees fit. Uh, as a head coach, I'm always uh, my job is always to oversee that process, help him where he could need help, uh, for him to lean on me when he has questions about what an offense is doing. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the expectation is that um, you know Denard's got control of the defense, and I'll be there as, as a as a resource and an asset when he needs it. Um, but yeah, I wanted a guy that could that could command the defense, command the room for sure, and I think I found that. Question for both. Um, forgive me. Um, you guys kind of mentioned earlier there's a lot of connected tissue on the staff as far as guys working with each other. You have a former high school teammate on the staff, yep. all those types of things. What does that mean to come into a new place with all you guys having so much connectivity? Yeah, I think that uh, we're always the product of our, of our environments and our upbringings. Um, and so there's guys you come across over your time in the league. And uh, – I think we're fortunate in the fact that we have a lot of really experienced coaches on our staff, even though obviously I'm a first time head coach and, and Denard's a first time defensive coordinator, but uh, it's certainly not our first time coaching and it's not our first time uh, with a lot of the guys that have been in these, in the rooms that we're in. Now, the, the important part to me is that you're open uh, to that experience. Um, so guys that have been around and done things that I'm going to lean on the people that I've hired to help me. Um, and I think Denard will say the same thing. And so when you have relationships with people, and it's not about just knowing somebody. These are guys that we've been uh, been to battle with, been in the trenches with. We've been in, in, in up and down seasons and, and goods and bads. And so I know how to talk to these guys. I know how uh, they're going to respond when I, when I react a certain way. Um, and that's important because you need that. It's hard enough as it is uh, to win football games. And to have guys that you have relationships with that you've built over time, a lot of these guys, for both Denard and myself, have built relationships with these guys over time uh, and believe in their abilities and their ability to communicate with us. And so um, there is an element to that that is important um, to have some people that you know. There's also guys that I've not worked with uh, on this staff, and, and I'm speaking as the head coach. You know, I, I didn't know J.O. I didn't know Justin Outen. I, I've heard of him. I had talked to him. And I... The minute I sat down with him, I thought, this guy can really help us. And, and so I was open to all all roads of, to building the staff. And there's some guys that I've got relationships with that I've worked with prior. Uh, there's some guys that I that I didn't know at all that uh, I came away really impressed with, obviously, uh, Denard being one of them. So uh, I think it's a really good mix. I think we had a great mix of experience. Uh, I think we have a great mix of youth. Uh, and I think we have a great mix of personalities. I think as you guys get to know them, you'll see it. But um, I think there is an element of relationship that's important uh, when you're building a staff that you do have some of that with the coaches you bring in. Obviously, denard has got great relationships with a few of the guys on defense as well, and um, that was an important part of the building the staff process. Do you also feel like one of the themes there is, is the well, teaching the part uh, of it? Sorry. One more time. Let's what go did, back. What did you, from Denard? 
Yeah, I just want to hear well, yeah. You know, the same things that Brian just talked about, you know, I feel the same. And then when you're around guys that that you've worked with, it's it's about how do those guys handle success and then how do those guys handle adversity. I've seen I've seen most of these guys go through that. And I know, you know, when things get tough, you know, they're gonna buckle down. They're not gonna waver. They're gonna get better because, you know, at the time when you need to get better, they're gonna be there right there and they're gonna be knocking at the door. So, you know, I'm comfortable with the guys we have on the staff. You were just talking about the things you were looking for in putting this staff together. Is another theme you're looking at and just developing how these guys develop players at positions? Because it seems like when you go do the research on any of these position players, like that's one of the biggest things a lot of them have done and had success at doing. Yeah, that's a, that's, that was an uh, intentional part of the process. Um, along with the, the personalities I was, I was trying to find, uh, making sure they all fit together. Uh, another huge part of that is, is guys that have shown and proven that they can develop and coach players over time. Um, because that's the name of the game in the NFL. We're, we're going to draft players. They're going to be young. They're going to make young player mistakes. Uh, our, our goal is always to get uh, those players from, from that point as rookies to hopefully second contracts, third contracts, Pro Bowls, All Pros. That's the, that's the goal. And I, and I wanted to be equipped uh, with a lot of guys that have proven their ability to do that. To approach the synergy aspect on offense, where it's like I've seen in the past, coaches have had like you go grab trick plays, you grab third and forever, you grab red zone. How do you plan to approach that? Is that for me or Denard? Both. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be the same way. You know, when when we get to talk about when Nick comes up here in a minute. Um, but at the end of the day, we're we hire people because they're good at their job, and, and we want our guys to feel empowered to go do their job. And part of that's going to be whatever each person is assigned to do. We're going to have experts in those areas. So third down, red zone, just like Denard described on defense. These guys, everyone's going to have an area that they're responsible for um, and their input and part of the game plan. And I'm going to lean heavily on those guys and their expertise, uh, just like Denard said he would as well. Um, that's generally how things are set up these days. It's a collaborative approach. It's a collaborative process uh, to make sure you're getting the best uh, from everybody that's on your staff and you're getting the most information you can have um, from each spot. And uh you know, I think that's how it's, it's what I'm accustomed to. It's how we worked in Cincinnati. Um, it's really how I've worked almost everywhere I've been, but particularly when I was in Cincinnati, uh, that approach served us really well. And you get a lot of good ideas. You get a lot of good perspectives. Um, like I said in my opening press conference, there's uh, something to the diversity of thought. You know, you want guys that have had different experiences in different places, uh, have different answers, because ultimately we're trying to do uh, the best we can on, on Sundays uh, to put the guys in the best spot so we can go win games. And, and that might be... It might be information from uh, from Kylan Butler as a quality control coach. He may have a tendency for me that uh, he brings up on, on a Thursday evening in the red zone, uh, and we might use that to help us win the game. And I think that there is nobody that's too small in the process, and there's going to be a lot of guys that have a lot of voice in the process, but ultimately we need as much input from as many places as we can so we can build the best game plan every week. What's the dynamic going to be? Mine for coach, so. I got one more for Denard. Okay. Uh, just, just you obviously work hard to get to this point. I guess what's the feeling as a coach, as a man, to now have um, a defense you can call your own and maybe prove and prove and Brian hire the right guy. Well, like I said, you know, you go through this this phase, you go through life, you go through um, the job process, and you put in all the work. You know, you 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 start from the bottom and you work your way through. And, you know, you get to the point where you, you know you're thoroughly prepared. This is a hell of a feeling, all right? To be named the defensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans is a hell of a feeling. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more happier, proud to be in an organization like this. And, um, you know, we got to put it together and we got to put a product out there that, that represents this organization the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Appreciate it. <clears throat>
uh, of Nick, both for me uh, as a head coach and what he can bring in the offensive coordinator role, which is is a little different than than what maybe you're used to around here, uh, having an offensive head coach with a, with a uh, that's calling the plays with an offensive coordinator by title uh, that doesn't call the plays. Uh, it's, a, it's a setup I was I'm trying to emulate from how we were set up in Cincinnati with myself and Zach Taylor. Um, it's a system that I know uh, is important, and I know that it works. Uh, and so Nick's job, he'll get more into the details of it, but uh, most of it is to, to make sure that the offensive staff and the offensive players and the offensive scheme keeps running uh, in all the moments that I'm not available to be there particularly during the course of the week. There's a preparation part of it um, that's critically important to me. And so uh, very important hire. Uh, there's nobody more deserving for it. Uh, and I'm, I'm incredibly excited to have him on this staff. Uh, you see, he's been around a lot of head coaches, a lot of different schemes, uh, a lot of different ways of thinking and doing business uh, on an offensive coaching staff. And it's going to provide us uh, a, lot of, a lot of advantages as we move forward in, in the game planning issues that start to come up when you get going. So uh, without that, I'll open it up for Nick. Uh, Nick Holtz, offensive coordinator, Tennessee Titans. For you guys, what, what did you see in each other during that one year that you spent together that was so formative? You think? Uh, you know, I think it's always interesting when you, you're you friends with somebody, you have a long-term you know relationship or whatever, and then both got put in roles and... You know, you always think, oh, I like I want to work with my friends or whatever. And then you get to see them work and you get to see kind of the their process and, you know, how they're detailed and all those little things that you really don't know when you don't actually get in the fire with somebody. So, you know, he really from the day he got to Oakland, you know, I was a holdover from um, Jack Del Rio staff to John Gruden's and Brian came in right away and. You know, John's a big presence, and there was you know a lot of veteran stuff in there, and you could see right away how detailed and professional, and all the ideas and uh, development he's had in his career. How do you? Uh, is it a little weird to say like Brian? How did you do this for Zach? As I try to kind of be you for him. A little bit, I, I think that could be, but I'm also you know, I think if you need to be yourself first so you know I'm not going to try to be Brian you know uh, we're different people in that regard but kind of I think really just as each day goes seeing a couple more things that I can take off his plate or hey have you thought about this and it's really kind of an open dialogue the whole time from how we're trying to figure things out and structure it this way hey do we want this guy to be in charge of third downs let's talk about it okay and then we go from there you'll preach maybe in the in the classroom maybe on the practice field every day you know i think uh you know you like uh denard was talking about you know effort you know toughness we're, we're going to stand for all those things but we really want to see guys playing with great speed detail and execution right and those are the three things that kind of go right off the bat right there and you can see those guys taking what we learned from the classroom taking out to the field and um really growing in that regard to your attack on offense, like, are you a more go with the flow, take what they give you, guy, or are you were like, this is what we're gonna do this week, and this is what we're gonna do. You know, I think there's more probably a question for him as the play caller, but I think we see it systematically. Of we want to just put, we want to run good plays into good looks, right? We just don't. We kind of want to have the chalk last, where we're not going. Oh, you know, they made us hot here. We didn't do this, so that's kind of, you know. But I guess I kind of defer to him too of how he wants to. See it and build the offense that way. Yeah, there's a there's a time and a place uh, where you try to dictate pace, tempo. Uh, there's a there's another time where maybe you are taking what the defense gives you, where maybe you've called a, a play action shot. You're trying to take one down the field. They do a good job covering it. You take the check down for ten yards. That's a little bit of taking what they give you. Um, we are certainly going to try to dictate the terms on offense. Um, that is, that is always going to be our goal. But within being able to dictate terms, uh, you want to be able to have the mindset, particularly the quarterback position, really it affects more than anybody else, is, is knowing when to take the easy throw, when to take the completion versus when to be aggressive. And so um, that's probably the best way I can say it is that we'll, we'll do everything we can to dictate terms, tempo, um, style of play, but ultimately we'll, we'll be smart about when and where we attack. And when we don't have those options, what do we do next? What's our answer? And that's that's a quarterback issue more than anybody. Uh, but we'll we'll ultimately want to be efficient when we don't have uh, the ability to dictate to a defense. Nick, you've uh, Nick, you've uh, got the, as a coordinator the opportunity to manage 25, 30 players, manage other coaches and such. What sort of characteristics have you gleaned from other people along the way in regards to just managing people? You know, I think everybody's kind of got their own management style. You know, I'm not a uh, 
I don't think you'll see me as like a yeller and a screamer or anything like that. But I think if you build relationships with people and you kind of empower them to do their jobs, you know, I, I feel like the people I've worked for really, they would empower you, you know, they empowered me and then they would say, all right, go and you keep getting more and more and more. And that's how, kind of how as a leadership style of the same thing with the players, Hey, we're going to give you this. You keep going that way. And we kind of build the connection in our, in that regard. Brian was just talking about diversity of experience, diversity of opinion, just in you guys' conversations these last couple of weeks, how similar are your thoughts on how to build the offense? Have you encountered any differences there or is it kind of one-minded? I think they've been pretty, pretty one-minded for the most part. You know, we've had a few discussions about, Hey, we've done this, we've done this, you know, and that's, uh, you know, we'll both walk back to our offices, go back to a se separate way and then uh, come back and revisit it. Uh, but there's a lot of similarities. You know, I think, uh, I've been in a lot of systems and I've worked for a lot of coaches, even though I was in one place for a long time. So I, the one reason you get to kind of stay in one place the whole time is that you are adaptable. And so I'd say that's probably been a strength of mine over my career and really kind of hoping to build on that and then take the things that he wants to do and the whole staff wants to do. It's not just, you know, Brian and Nick doing all this stuff. You know, we got such a great staff that we're going to build in everybody's ideas. Nick, with you being a first time OC, you being a first time head coach, you also cross paths with his dad, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, at Nebraska. How great is that to kind of have a guy like this uh, as a veteran and experienced guy on the offense to, you know, pick his brain sometimes? I would say there's, I mean, as far as experience goes, uh, there's not really anybody that has more in all the different facets of an organization. He's been a head coach in college in the NFL. He's called plays in the NFL. Uh, he's been arguably, uh, in my opinion, the best offensive line coach in football for a long time. Um, his experience and his and his wealth of knowledge, he probably knows. He's probably forgotten more football than I know, um, and so it's a huge asset to us to have him. And again, not just because um, you know that's my father, but because of his experience as a football coach. And uh, again, there's not many better out there. And for you know, Nick Nick worked for him a long time ago. Um, I would you'd argue that they're probably both very different people at this point. Um, yeah, my dad in particular, but. Just the just the ability to have that 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 knowledge, experience, wisdom, perspective uh, on all the things that that go on, and from top to bottom in in, a, in the football process, not just the coaching. And so um, to have that available to us is huge. And, and trust me, he'll he'll have uh, quite a bit of input and, and ability to to help us uh, along the process. So. Right, right, right. What's the head coach? Brian, right. what's it like? You can out shout uh, me, but I'm okay. Okay, okay, but I'm talking to you more. So don't do that. Brian, as I was saying, I apologize. Go ahead. Um, sorry, I asked you last week when you were here. Hey, you thought about interviewing your dad. Now that you got the opportunity to interview, what was that process like, and what was it like attempting to hire? Hmm. That there's probably not. Uh, uh, it was a. There's a, it was a complicated process um, because it wasn't something that I had anticipated him uh, in the moment, if that's what he wanted to do. Uh, I wasn't sure he would be contractually allowed to. Um, and it was a process that we had to work through with, uh, with, with the Browns organization. And, and thankfully, um, they were really, you know, kind is the wrong word. This isn't a kind business, but um, they were, they were, aware enough to know the uniqueness of the situation and, and allow it to, to continue to, to go down that road. So uh, appreciative of, of that perspective from them and allowing it to happen. But, um, you know, it wasn't something that initially we thought was going to be the case. And uh, it turned out that, that we were going to be able to make it work. And, uh, you know, probably one of the coolest uh, moments for me is, is being able to, to have that happen. Um, it's been really fun to, to drive to work with them every day and uh, and do those things. I, it's not something I ever thought would, would work, truthfully. So um, to be here with him is, is a really, really awesome uh, moment for me, both as a, as a son and uh, as a professional, because I know how much he can help us uh, with his knowledge. There really wasn't an interview process. Uh, it was more he made the decision he wanted to come uh, come here to Tennessee, and, and we went about trying to make it work. What's the, what's the head coach, assistant coach, son, father dynamic like? Uh, it's been really normal, you know. It's been um, he's he's very understanding and uh, of what it means to sit in the chair that I sit in every day, uh, having done it himself. Uh, he knows when 
advice is welcome. He knows when he probably should leave me alone. Um, I know when I should leave him alone uh, on the flip side. Uh, but it's just been really fun for us to, to be able to, to I, you know, I said he's got this, uh, he's got this 16 inch clincher, you know, those, those softballs, the, the 16 inch softballs. And he played growing up and it's, he, he has one of them in his office. And, you know, he came in the office the other day, it was probably about nine o'clock and we were kind of finishing some stuff up and I'm sitting there throwing a, throwing a softball back and forth as we're talking about some different ideas for something. And so just to have that experience has, has been really cool. And, um, you know, he just wants to be able to hear, to help me and to help this organization win. And, um, that part's been really fun. It's been it's been a really cool experience for me so far. You mentioned Rob. Is he is he currently living with you? Is he get his own place? What's that dynamic? Oh, like? he's got his own place. I don't want him. To, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's got his own place. Uh, I'll have I have my own place. We're we're he uh, he we there's there's with the amount of time we spend together in the building. There's certainly time for space. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm curious, uh, growing up, uh, offensive mind, and such. Are you one of those guys who likes just drawing up plays in the dirt and stuff like that, and just thinking of things that might work someday? Oh yeah, that's kind of the. That's kind of the. I think we're all like that at some at some level. But yeah, we're sitting there talking about plays and everything's plays off of other plays that make it look like this and double moves and everything else. So it's kind of been, uh, you know, to be, you know, the, as Brian said so nicely, the lowest of the low quality control guy when I got in the league. And, where was, you know, you always say, oh, this is what I wanted to do when I get my shot or, you know, get in these rooms. And, you know, the last couple of years of kind of moving up the ladder, it's kind of been doing those things. So, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a – you always kind of want to turn your brain off a little bit, but it's tough. Brian, what, are your on, what are your thoughts on Will Levis and just developing him? I mean, look, it's going to be his fourth offense in four years. What, what are your guys' thoughts on it? So, you know, starting with – well, last year in Jacksonville, you know, we weren't really in the first round quarterback market, so I hadn't really watched very much of him. And then starting to watch him, you know, when I was with the Jags as, you know, opponent crossover film, you know, the first thing that kind of jumped off is obviously, you know, the arm talent. And then the second thing I would say that really jumps off is the toughness, right? I think that, you know, we talk about for quarterbacks, you know, the really the three things we're looking for is decision making, accuracy, and toughness. And you saw all that, you know, and I'm sure. You know, uh, he would say he probably wants uh, to improve in some of those areas and things like that. But you could see that baseline there for him of that those skills are there. And so it was, uh, uh, you know, I think it's a reason what made this job probably so attractive to Brian and probably the rest of us. In terms of this offense, mostly it's a, it's a young group of guys led by Levis. It's also a veteran or two, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, how do you go about, I guess, kind of selling yourself as a new guy to a veteran who's accomplished so much like that? You know, I think when you get into the – you know, when I was coming in as a college guy into the NFL, you know, there's always kind of this intimidating, like, oh, I, you know, I don't know if I know enough. And I think players always respond to if, if they feel you're genuine and they know you can help them, right? So if you come there with good information, you're giving them the details or – you know, you're explaining something to them and they can tell you know what you're talking about, they're always going to listen because, you know, players just want to be successful. And so I think that's how really how you earn your stripes in that regard. It really doesn't have to do with age or experience as, as much as showing them that. Brian, in your first press conference, you mentioned that you wanted Tennessee to feel like a family, like a place people enjoy coming to work, similar to how you felt in Cincinnati. Yeah. How much of that starts with your coaching staff and how much are the pre-existing relationships the coaching staff has going to help establish that culture? It's a huge part of it um, because if, if we don't enjoy coming to work together, how are we going to expect anybody else to enjoy uh, working together? And so I, one of the goals when building the staff, one of the traits I was looking for is is good people, uh, guys that can that know how to get along uh, that know how to build relationships, that are positive forces. Um, and I think you're going to feel those guys as you get to know them. But there's a, a aspect of building the staff that was important to me because uh, it's hard to ask a team to be connected. It's hard to ask um, position groups to be connected if they don't feel the same thing from the people that are uh, in charge of, of the other part of the process. And so, uh, you know, it was great. Just as an example, yesterday, you know, we had a whole – uh, the first day in for really all the coaches officially that, that had been hired was yesterday. Uh, had a big staff meeting in the team room of all the football operations people and um, just a chance for, for Rand and I uh, and Chad to, to introduce kind of our staffs to each other for some of the staffs. Uh, you know, you're talking about the, the training room and the operations and the, 
the equipment room, all these people that, that have an effect on our players every day, um, they're a part of that process. And we wanted to make sure that everyone also felt the same thing because, again, if the operation around the players is the way you want it and people are connected the way you want them connected in those roles, um, the team feels it. And then there's really that there is no other way. This is how we're going to operate. And uh, part of that building of the staff and the relationships was people that had had experiences with each other. And so they, they knew bits and pieces of the guys coming in helps that process go a little faster. Um, yeah. I think that's probably the best way to answer it. Nick, will you have any specific responsibilities like red zone or two minute, or is that going to be something that is you know, collectively? I'll be over, you know, I'm just like a regular offensive coordinator, except I just don't call the plays. Yeah. So I'll be involved in every part of the game plan. Uh, you know, we've kind of talked about, you know, even when during the interview of how we want to structure the week and things like that. And, you know, it's very collaborative, but I'll be in, in every part of that. You say you don't call the plays. How much of the hay is in the barn before the game starts? about what plays are actually going to be called between the two. Good question. Quite a bit uh, is the answer. Uh, because of the way that the, that the week operates and the way you build a game plan with the input from the staff and the input from the quarterback, which is sort of the, the, the cherry on top of the preparation process as you get to Saturday, uh, quarterback's going to have a lot of input as to what he likes and where his favorites are. He'll rank the plays as we get ready to go to a game. So, for example, uh, you know, we might have – uh, our top two plays in third and two to three and third and four to six, they're going to come off the sheet just like that, especially early in the game until we have to adjust in between series or, or at the quarter, at the half, however that works. But we have a starting point plan, just like you have uh, your kind of, we call them openers, some people call them first 15, but uh, you have a handful of plays in there that you're trying to probe the defense. You're trying to uh, give your guys a chance to get a rhythm going. Uh, the quarterback's going to have a, an input into that portion of the game plan. So, the early part of the game, when you when the calling of the plays is really sort of already done before the game starts. Uh, where good play callers, I think, make their money and where good staffs uh, separate themselves in this league is how quickly you can pivot uh, in the process of a game. Uh, again, whether that's usually in between series or even trying to think about what's coming next. And so uh, the anticipatory part of that process is really, I think, what separates um, – play callers in the league, but as far as the game plan and the early part of the game, it's going to be relatively well set uh, before the game even, uh, before it even hits Sunday. And so uh, that's that's how you hope it to be, that's how you want it to be. And then again, what, where we make our money on Sundays is um, how quickly we can adjust and pivot and adapt to whatever we're seeing that might be different than we anticipated. Right, when you're very busy, I guess, obviously putting your staff together, what's the process like and also trying to get to speed with with because the draft yeah. combine coming up, free agency right around the corner. How have you managed to juggle all that? It's a lot all, all at one time, um, but it's not been something that's been overwhelming. Um, I've felt very good about the how the days have gone. Uh, the process has been good. I feel good about that. Uh, I've been sitting in the draft meetings this week. Obviously, our scouts are in town. The draft meetings have started. I've been involved in those. Um, I'll leave when I got to go handle interviews or make sure something else has got to get done. But uh, ultimately, leaning on all the people that, that we've hired to get their opinions and thoughts in on, on the uh, free agency class and, and our roster. And it allows me to be able to kind of freely move through each each element that comes up every day. I'm, I'm not in my desk chair very often. I find myself sort of all over the place over the course of a day. But um, I feel really good about where we're headed. And, and the amount of work is still a lot. Um, but the good thing is, is there's a lot of hours in the day. Um, and, and we keep the lights on late here right now because there's not, a, not, my, not nowhere for me to go. My family's not in town. So uh, it's kind of all football all day long. What's left on the staff? How, how many spots would you say you still have open? Maybe worse, maybe a couple of spots you Yeah. Uh, obviously, I haven't hired a special teams coordinator yet. That uh, That is hopefully um, coming soon. We've interviewed quite a few people for it. Um, there might be a secondary. There's an assistant offensive line coach job that, that is still open that we're uh, in the process of interviewing. Um, and then, uh, obviously, with, with, with Frank going to New York, uh, there's a strength coach job that uh, is open as well. So, a uh, couple of things outstanding still, but but ultimately, uh, I'd say we're probably about 90, 95% done. I mean, there's only a couple more left to go. So um, getting really close to being final, final. Uh, with a new strength and conditioning coach, will he get the opportunity uh, to make a determination on the people that you retained, or are they going to work? On yeah, that's areas? always going to be part of the, the conversation. Um, but but those the people that we've we've retained just similar to the coaches we've retained uh, in the process um, you know are, are 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 with us 
to start. And, and when you get new people in, you make, you have conversations and they have opportunities to, to interview themselves. And, um, that's sort of how that works just in general, coaches and strengths have to be very similar. Um, so, you know, you anytime you're hiring a new person, um, there's always an influx of potential new people. So that's uh, the nature of our business. And I think we're all on the same page with it. Did you guys imagine anything close to this when you were running scout team offense at LaSalle back in the day? Both. No, not even close. <laughs> this is like a, yeah. this is, it's a, you know, you would ask me two weeks ago, I wouldn't have imagined this. So, uh, and I think the one thing, you know, for us, we just kind of always, we just kind of always just kind of kept working. And, you know, he was in Denver and I was at the Raiders. So we didn't talk a lot of football then because, you know, I, I, he wasn't telling me anything that the Broncos were doing. And I wasn't telling me anything the Raiders were doing. So, uh, no, absolutely not. But it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun so far. Is Coach Ladd pretty proud of you guys? I would imagine. How you uh, talking about I would about? imagine. I haven't talked to Ladd. Um, I've talked to some other people there. Um, but I have not talked to Ladd. I, I'm – Looking forward to hopefully having him at a game here at some point, um, you know, because obviously I don't know if you guys know this either, but Kylan Butler also went to Deal Sal. So uh, there's three of us. Obviously, we're a little bit older than him, but uh, there's three of us now that that were from our high school, and uh, it's a proud moment for for me, um, just as you know, for a lot of the guys that I've that I went to high school with that we know that have had a lot of success in their respective careers. It's just uh, we've just happened to to find our way uh, into the same building and. Um, Something I'm, I'm I'm proud of. I'm proud of what Nick's done just as a friend. Uh, professionally, he's up to the task. I can't wait to start working. Uh, when we actually get to the real football part, is going to be the fun part. But um, just as a as a as a fellow teammate and, and alumni, I'm, I'm really it's I'm proud to sit up here with, with somebody that I've known for that long. When you guys did talk during those Denver Oakland years, if you weren't talking football, what what were the conversations like? Were you envisioning this sort of stuff, or were you just kind of friendship talks? Just more friends, and then I, I, yeah, I don't know. And then we would just, I think, you know, coaches always kind of try to get something from somebody else, and then you're, and then, you know, always talk about, hey, you see what's going on around the league, and those kind of things, or hey, did you guys play the, uh, did you guys play the Buccaneers this week? Hey, did you guys see the coverage this way, or something like that? So some of those kind of things we would always talk about, but. Brian, uh, Brian, uh, I guess the last time we talked to you, maybe you were meeting Will for the first time. Uh, I know he's since said you kind of kept him up to date with what's going on with the staff and yep. been in communication with him. What, what's that first maybe a couple of weeks been like with him and why it was important to kind of keep him up to speed with everything? Yeah, going it's on? been great. I, I just I know that as the as the quarterback, you you you're certainly not um, you're not owed those explanations uh, or or input. But I think the best relationships with with head coaches and quarterbacks are ones where they they are given those opportunities to share. Uh, information like that, and I thought it was important to keep Will uh, abreast of what was happening, uh, both you know hiring wise, uh, where we were at organizationally. Just you know, this is he's he plays a huge role in this in this whole thing too, and so uh, he needs to feel like he's got some uh, at least has my ear and, and can come to me with anything he thinks, uh, and then I'm able to tell him uh, what's happening for us. And I think that's that's important uh, for him to feel like he's got some involvement, some ownership, some input to what's happening. Um, and again, it's not necessarily that he's owed that. It's just that I think that's the working relationship that I want to have with him. And uh, I think for me, it's starting that precedent was was the right thing to do. And um, I think he's appreciated it. And it's been really fun to, to start to get to know him. Obviously, he was out in Vegas. I called him the other day just to check in. And he was getting ready to go play with Phil Mickelson. Um, and I, as, as I'm learning a, a about Will, he was I, said, I asked him when he came back. He was back here uh, yesterday. And I asked him, hey, how was it? You know, what did you think? And he goes, I was just... I was just mad that none of my drives hit the fairway. And I was like, well, when was the last time you played? And he goes, the bye week? I was like, well, I was like, I don't know, man. I, don't, I tell you, if I went out and swung a club right now, I don't think I'd hit many fairways either. But just speaks to the competitiveness, and he wanted to play well and, and show well. So uh, I just thought that was, that was fun that, that he got a chance to go out there and be around those people. But uh, my relationship with him, um, his relationship – with me and, and Nick and Bo uh, is going to be really a critical factor in, in our success. And um, I want him to make sure that he feels like he has uh, input and ownership into that process. And um, we can kind of build it from there and, and hope that he gives me the same kind of feedback I need from him, particularly when you're talking about plays and what you like and how you like it. I thought, like I think I said in my uh, press covers, one of the things that made Jake Browning so unique and so helpful was that we had a, good, a, a great relationship and rapport where he could tell me and he could tell Zach, um, "Hey, I don't like I don't like this play. Don't don't call this." 
um, without f any kind of fear of a retribution or no, you're going to run what I tell you. No, that's not how it's going to work. Um, we're going to have a, an input from him. And I think it's important that he feels that willingness for me. Um, so we can, we can build a, a successful scheme around his skill set that he feels comfortable with. Brian, Bernard was asked earlier about looking back at last year and what he saw. Yeah. What, what have you seen looking back at last year? What have you liked? What have you not liked from you? Yeah, I mean, you see, you see plenty of things that, like every team. I mean, I, if I were to turn on our Cincinnati tape from last year, we'd have plenty of things we want to get better at. Um, things you do differently. Things that every every year you look back and, and try to find where you can improve. And I think um, we're always going to start with what are we going to do first because we're all new and the scheme is new. Um, so I, I won't spend a ton of time on, on what happened last year, um, but I do watch it. I do have awareness because there is things to coach off of. Uh, and even if the schemes aren't the same, um, techniques, um, how things have happened in, over the course of a game, reactions, uh, things, especially at the quarterback spot as well, like you can learn from all those things. And so we'll do our best to learn from it. Um, obviously, I won't put too much stock in, in – what was good or bad ultimately because it's going to be different for us this year but um, there's definitely things to learn from and coach from from what's happened before Brian, I'm curious, when you uh, sit here in nashville and throw on the titans Bengals tape from the last year the first time what was uh, what goes through your mind then uh, we got beat pretty good um that was a that was a tough game joe had joe had was was fighting through the calf injury um wasn't his best day I think he didn't he didn't feel great that day and then and then we didn't play very well ultimately I mean we didn't we, we started out decent um, but then we didn't play well I think on either side of the ball and you know give a lot of credit to the the, the guys that are here in, in Tennessee it was a good good day for them um, they played really hard uh, they made life hard on us offensively and and on the flip side they the offensively they had a handful of explosive plays I think if I remember it correctly that uh, that generated some points for him. So tough day for the Bengals uh, in Nashville. And again, hopefully we're on on the same side of that uh, as a Titan this year when we play. So, uh, but yeah, it was that was that was a hard game for us. When you look at, I guess, the personnel and go back and review this team from last year yeah. with such a philosophy change in terms of how you want to do the offense. Mm -hmm. How do you go about assessing guys to say this guy can fit into what we do or this guy doesn't fit into what we do? I think that's our job as coaches, uh, as a coaching staff, is to be able to say, what does the player do well? Uh, how can we use them? Um, because good players fit in every system, and it's just a matter of how you choose to use that player, uh, what positions you put them in to be successful. Um, so it's it's more about what are, what are the qualities that are good, and how do we use them best uh, to help us win? And um, yeah, again, that, there's. There's a place for players that, that you have everywhere across the board um, that can help you. And so our job is to find out what that is and how to use them, uh, especially guys that, that, have, that are under contract, that are here. Uh, it's our job to find a way to use them best. And um, that's always our challenge is to put those guys in great spots.